Let us now undertake the study of rotating systems. We'll study the kinematics of rigid bodies, first of all, and consider an XY coordinate system, and we'll put a cutout of Alaska from grade eight steel sheet, so it's truly gonna be a nice, solid, rigid body. And it's pivoted from a point on the Aleutian chain here at the origin. So here's point P on this system and a, a vector for the position at angle theta. And then later on, we have Alaska rotated through another angle. Now theta is the rotational position. And let's consider some basic math about that. We have radius at two different angles here, angle theta. And let's consider that r is equal to two. And s is r theta by definition, the arc length. And so if that's equal to one, if this is say one meter or one unit, then theta real simply is 0.5 radians. Now the radian is convenient. And the reason it's convenient is we don't need to keep track of a complex sequence of x and y coordinates to track the position. We just need r and theta, all nice. And it's very simple, r and theta. Otherwise, if you don't use r and theta, you would need s, uh, in terms of degrees at least, s is equal to r theta in degrees. And then to convert that to radians, you'd have to multiply two pi over 360. So there's two pi radians in 360 degrees. So that's not quite as simple. And now angular velocity. Angular velocity, we start with the point P and at theta one and P prime at theta two. So we have a difference in angular positions, these, this point going from one place to another. Now the angular velocity is defined as the symbol omega. So we'll, it looks like a W, but it's got, a, got these little curlies on the tips. So a little more rounded on the tips, I guess you might say average angular velocity is equal to theta two minus theta one over delta T, kind of like change in position, which is displacement over time. Sound familiar? I'm sure it does. So that's delta theta, delta T. So speaking of angular velocity, all points on a rigid body have the same average angular velocity. So it doesn't matter if the point is out here or somewhere closer you think of it this whole line is sweeping through this angle at a certain rate so points closer to the origin will still sweep through the same angle as they do way out here the angular difference is the same for all points on the object omega then is really the limit as delta t approaches zero of delta theta delta t which is d theta dt in radians per second hey that looks familiar Remember, velocity is dx dt. Hmm, very nice analogous connection there. We're talking radians per second. So every part of a rotating rigid body has the same angular velocity in radians per second. Keep in mind, we just kind of alluded to a minute ago anyway, a revolution per second, which is also 360 degrees, one revolution, is equal to two pi radians per second. So that's the conversion factor. RPMs, revolutions, well, that's revolutions per minute, but the number of revolutions in a given time is a common way of expressing the rotational velocity, the angular velocity of an object. And now let's define angular acceleration. Average angular acceleration, alpha, average, is the limit as delta t approaches zero of delta omega delta t the change in angular velocity over time. So alpha is d omega dt, just like acceleration is dv dt. Alternate way to consider this is say alpha is the second derivative of the position vector, the position equation, I should say. So alpha is d squared theta dt squared, radians per second squared, just like acceleration is the second derivative of position with respect to x. So let's now summarize the connection between rotation and translation. So then here are the basic definitions of motion, linear and angular. 
So linear is also translational, angular is rotational, and the connection between them. So we have x in translation, or s, and in rotation we have theta. What's the connection? Theta is s over r, or s is equal to r theta. Now, for our velocity, v, which is dx dt, or ds dt, in rotation we have omega equals d theta dt. What's the connection? Very important one. Omega is equal to V over R. So the omega, and to think of omega being constant for a minute, what's the ratio of velocity to radius? It might be easier to think of, well, first of all, this is speed at the moment, is equal to omega R. So omega is a constant. The greater R is as we extend outward on from the point of rotation outward on the extended body. The speed becomes greater as the radius gets greater. Okay, so that hopefully is intuitive to you. So that's a very important relationship. Now, acceleration, of course, is dv dt, and alpha, angular acceleration, is d omega dt. And here the connection is that the angular acceleration is the linear acceleration or the tangential acceleration, parallel acceleration, parallel to the trajectory of the arc it's on, divided by r. Or the tangential acceleration is, is proportional to r. If you multiply both sides by r, it's alpha r. Alpha is typically a constant, or it may or may not be, but in any case, the further radius the radius is, a point way out there is going to accelerate translationally or parallel to the path at a greater rate. So that will become more clear if it's not yet. Just as for translational motion we have the basic equations and then derived equations, we have the same thing for rotational systems. But you're going to be very happy about something. Namely that the connection between the two is just intuitive. You really don't have to learn anything. You don't have to memorize a whole new suite of equations. I'll prove it to you. Right now, translation and rotation. The derived equations, so to speak. So here's our first one. Actually, that's a, a fundamental equation. V is equal to V0 plus AT. All right, you're all very familiar with that. Now in rotation, the connection is omega angular velocity is initial angular velocity plus angular acceleration times time so look how similar that is we really don't just replace v with omega how about our real powerful position equation for translation x is x zero plus v zero t plus one half at squared well theta angular position is the initial angular position plus initial angular velocity times time, plus one half alpha t squared. That's beautiful. It's the same analogous relationship to uh, the, the different, just the different parameters, x versus theta. Otherwise, the equations look, have the same form, the same structure. So let's keep going here. This is getting fun. We have this potent equation that does not involve time. V squared is V0 squared plus 2A times displacement, X minus X0. So we have omega squared is omega 0 squared plus 2 alpha theta minus theta 0. So once again, really nothing new to memorize. X minus X0 change in position or displacement is 1 half V0 plus V times T. So this is really the average velocity times time. And here we have theta minus theta zero is one half omega zero plus omega t. So see, I told you, you really weren't gonna have to learn anything new. As long as you understand what omega is, it's analogous to velocity, theta analogous to x, and alpha analogous to acceleration. You got him in the bag. Well, let's stop wasting time and put these kinetic, kinematics expressions into a problem-solving context. So here we go. We have a bicycle wheel. Angular velocity 4 radians per second at time t is equal to 0. It's got a constant angular acceleration of minus 1.2 radians per second squared. And point P 
is on the x-axis at t is equal to zero. We're going to figure out the wheel's angular velocity at t is equal to three seconds, what angle p makes with the x-axis, and when will the wheel stop. So here's omega zero, four radians per second initially, and alpha minus 1.2, omega three seconds, is equal to omega zero plus alpha t, basic kinematic expression. So that's equal to four radians per second, minus 1.2 times three, 0.4 radians per second. There, we got our first answer. There is the angular velocity. Now what angle does it make? Well, let's pull out a sufficiently potent angular position equation. And that would be theta in three seconds is theta zero plus omega zero t plus one half alpha t squared. Zero starts at zero degrees from the x-axis plus omega zero t is four times three minus 0.63 squared is 6.6 .6 radians. Look how fast that was. Well, what's 6.6 .6 radians? Oh, two pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. Let's go ahead and convert this to degrees because we're probably more familiar with it. So it's 6.6 .6 times 360 degrees per two pi radians and that gives us 378 degrees. So it's one full revolution plus 18 degrees. So 18 degrees with respect to positive x is where this thing is gonna end up. Now the wheel stops when omega equals zero. So let's solve for omega equals zero with the kinematics expression. So here we go. So when will it stop? Solve for t. t is omega zero over negative alpha. Plug it in, four over 1.2, 3.33 seconds. And there's your first little problem solving with rotational kinematics.